Welcome back, everybody, for the fourth game of the evening. We've got Lucent versus London United, two of the bigger UK orgs who we've been kind of following a little bit over the last couple of years anyway. It's very exciting to see them here up in NLC Division 2, clashing it out, though with quite different results it stands. Lucent, 3-1, and one, doing pretty well. London United... Struggling a little bit more to find that consistent form as we've kind of seen with some of these other teams stuck right now at one and three. Both of these teams that ended up winning the UKL in their own respective slits and both of these teams, ones I backed in the finals. I am definitely flexing that one. Obviously, they've changed a fair bit in rosters, but we have not seen the London United that I have been so used to. And part of the reason for that is we haven't seen that perfect drafting that I came to expect from this squad. So as we hop into champ select, we can start to break it down. We're going to have some more of the abstract picks, the Icy Gale Rengar getting taken off of the table as expected. These kind of things that you just do not want to risk your time against. Uh, no, not at all. And let's be real. Anybody who has seen Icy Gale on Rengar knows why you don't let him have that champion. I have seen him get it once, twice, I think. Ever once since or twice too many times. And I think he destroyed both games. So it's just like, just don't do it. Don't give him that. Don't give him that. Uh, that champion. It's a bad idea. In fact, it's a triple ban at Icy Gale, who is clearly the the main focus in this ban phase. The response, it's a bit more of an AD carry focus with the Caitlyn Lazeri off alongside the Corky, which has just been so strong in general right now. Still got the Jinx available. Still got that Senna that's actually going to be picked up as the priority for London United. Interesting putting Gazette on that one straight away. No Divinus has quite the repertoire of engaged supports like the Rel and Leona to potentially pair with that. Likely to be what we're seeing as it continues forth. Now, Lucent, are we going to get the expected Jinx plus Thresh combo? Or is it going to be Jinx and maybe a jungler getting picked up on the side? Something like the Xin Zhao still open due to all that jungle, uh, sorry, top lane focus in the bands. Fantastic. Well, there is, of course, Jinx locked in. I do want to double check in with production here as well, because that's an unusual name in the mid lane there for London United, because Mortifer is in, not Kusan. I don't know whether that's a rename or whether we've got a substitute in. So if production can check that one out for me, I would really appreciate it, because that's definitely raising an eyebrow on my end. But of course... For Lucent, they lock in the Jin Zhao for Fantasy alongside the Jinx we mentioned earlier. And Senna last game kind of got a little bit rolled by the Jinx shove in. So we'll have to see whether Lucent can continue to do that. Fuyu, of course, a very prominent AD carry, very capable. Uh, impressed uh, people a lot last year on various different situations. Doing a great job up in the UK LC as well as down in the UK EL last year. Okay, and we're actually going to get the Thresh taken away yeah. by Divinus. Not exactly the common pairing with Senna. It's one of the more abstract ones. doesn't exactly have that amount of innate synergy beyond the fact that they get to have, you know, that little, ooh, it's the lore, guys. Come on, look at this. We get, get a bit of fun over there. But outside of it, not going to be too much working for them. It's going to be a safe lane, to say the least, which means we need to see very heavy carry topside right now. You have Icy Gale. That's the name of the game. We have that Graves flex pick between himself, Dunlossy, and potentially Mortifier, if it's a sub or if it's Kusa or not. So, a lot of different things up in the air right now. Of course, Graves does get shove and priority, and of course, it's a little bit more, you've got those generally weak side center who can potentially help that out. But also, on the other side, Graves is still also a champion you sometimes want to leave alone, right? It's not necessarily someone you want to gank towards so much, you just kind of want to leave him to do his own thing. I know that was a conversation that Goldborg was having about drafting Graves and Senna into the same competition. If that Graves does end up in the top lane, though, as you said, it could well be a flex as yet. I like think fourth the, top lane. <laughs> this is. I'm. I can't see why it wouldn't be five. I see. Girl is probably going to get his Yone ban next, right? Like, I mean, the, the drag is taken away. You want to get rid of as many safe top laners as possible right now and just try and give Icy Gale the works. I'm expecting probably a Renekton ban next from London United, just another one of those ones that people are usually happy to blind. I don't think it'd work very well for Lucid's comp here, but it is one of those champions that so, so many top laners around the world are like, okay, just give me that. Could be a Mundo instead, potentially. It's another mm. one of the picks we've seen from Kastroon a couple times as there we go. Five, Five for Icy Gale. He's playing bingo. Go. I mean, this is a Gastrullus being the guy who's been playing, you know, the likes of the Gragas, the, the Urgot, the Dr. Mundo, safer picks, and getting rid of all these options which could maybe out-split push you, out-duel you, out-scale you, make your life very difficult, going to be the option, and that might just leave a Jace pickup, potentially as the hover, but 
Thinking around some of these enchanters as well. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, it could also just be banning out all the strong split push scaling options and allow for an enchanter top as well as a potential angle here. It's definitely an option that's on the table. Cled, we are reaching down the top lane pool <laughs> right now. This if is we're a, getting this that is far a, down it. It's like there's the well and we've just gone down there's the go. mundo lock in okay. that has been a standard for Castrillon before it does lock in question then becomes what does icy gale have left that he wants to play into a champion like mundo because most of the Set. shall we say standard options might not be there i mean he could just take this graves into the top lane there is still that option it has been locked in lucent seemed direly sure that is not the case though dunlossy they have got an experience on Graves they before, back when they were on UKEL. On Mythos was a champion that was heavily associated with them. As we will get that Trundle. Could, could top lane? Could be top lane. We don't could know that until the swaps come out. So all we know yes. is Mortifer is going to be getting this last pick right now. He is going to be a blind mid lane. If we take a look, uh, funnily enough, there's basically no mid laners banned. You got Twisted Fate. You wouldn't want that here into a Brom. You got Syndra. Probably wouldn't want that here into a Brom. You might be catching a theme here, my friend, uh, because there's a lot of champions that kind of get denied by the Sprom Vigar's open, I guess. Yeah, we've seen two. We saw two in a row. Won't be this time. But that will be the Silas locked in. And there's still a little bit of room for flexing here. Because, I mean, unlikely, but I suspect that's still going to be the Silas mid lane. And then the question is whether it's the Graves or the Trundle top. I suspect, probably with the way the meta's going, it will be the Graves towards that top lane, especially considering Trundle into Jinzao is such a good matchup. And Lucent have got to find themselves a mid laner to go and round out their own composition. And they're thinking about a Vex right now. On second left, I expect they don't have time to swap as it will be that Vex, like you say. Um, So I always like to give a Silas rating after the draft to see how good the pick is. Uh, just looking at the enemy ultimates. Pr pretty good, honestly. Pretty good. Got a great selection of ultimates to steal regardless of which lane matchups we end up seeing it. Thing is, Vex has a great time into Silas because of the amount of dashes, having both the Kingslayer and then the two separate dashes he has on that abscond abduct, means that Vex just gets constant procs of that passive. Mm. It is so oppressive to play against, which is why I think that this was full knowledge by the London United squad saying, okay, this champ is available, it's pretty good into us, gonna swap it. I to say, Silas has gone topside. Graves has gone mid. There it is. You kind of mentioned it. It's like, I don't want to do with the dash. But not that Graves isn't going to be dashing, by the yeah. by. But will at least have the shove. And you don't necessarily have to use your quick draw quite as much. So there is at least that option. And you'll try and run Icy Gale on Silas into Dr. Mundo for Castrillo. And that's mm. not a match if I was necessarily expecting to be commentating today. I mean, when we have, what is that, seven top lane bads in yeah. net? Makes yeah. a lot of sense why we have gone this far into the recesses I mean, of the top lane, I'm and I like saying, it. We have seen Darshan play Zeri top and Broken Blade play Corky top over the season, so strictly, you could count that as nine if you want to count those as very okay, obscure flexes. Okay, well, by that merit, when I was still playing in the uni scene, there was somebody that was oh, playing no, in, was, like, Challenger really, this, with okay, the Caitlyn Falcon top. This was and LEC in fairness. That's not <laughs> You're reaching right now. I, until I we see it at our I level of play, I'm classing them as equal matches at least. <laughs> yes, that's fair. It is definitely strong champions regardless of which role they're being played in. And the thing is, when you look at Mundo, one of the most important parts is how many individual pieces of CC do you have so that you could get rid of that passive and then stop him picking it back up again and keep him locked down. Silas has the slows, which Mundo is notoriously not that good against because he can't just shrug them off with his passive. And I'm assuming Icy Gale will likely be building towards the Everfrost. Might end up going for something else, but in that case, they should be able to actually contest Struelen later on. Okay, that's the plan, because of course Mundo known for scaling pretty well, being a pretty good frontline tank, but there are options here. They do have some ways to potentially deal with this. They're going to need some anti-healing. They're probably going to want a Lord Dominic's regards or two, but they have got the options and some slightly interesting draft priorities there. The hyper fo top yeah. lane focus bans, the hyper top lane focus flexes really in the end as well from the side of uh, London United. And now we need to wait and see how it all plays out on the Rift and kind of wondering whether you see a particular edge in draft with the way things ended up considering there was some slightly wonky options in terms of what they were trying to pinch in terms of champion pools, etc. Ah, uh, yes. The Colorcaster's favorite question when there's a completely oh, yeah. jank draft on our stream. Which one won, by the way? <laughs> because take a look at this one. It's a bit up in the air. 
for being completely honest with you, as we are just waiting to load on in. I'm just trying to sum it up for myself. Well, there's ones that's harder to think out loud when everything is a bit, a bit up in the air, a bit abstract. I don't really like the Senna just because of the lack of DPS that that comp actually has. Mm. Now, without it, the Silas in the top plane isn't going to do a massive amount of DPS unless they opt for something like the Leandries, which, like we were just talking about, would remove the ability to lane against Mundo later on, would still help in a sense, but not amazingly. Anyway, across the board, it's still going to be a bit troublesome for the London United squad for my money, and I'll have to give it over to Lucent at a glance. I see where you're going with that one, especially considering how well they've been playing. I appreciate the ability to try and problem solve yourself out of a pretty weird draft phase, but still going to be kind of difficult potentially. But, you know, you've got Isagale on a on a champion you can carry on. That's always a plus, even if it took a little bit of a reach, around, reach down that well to find something out of that pool to, to pull out with all the bands and focuses and the matchup in front of them. But, you know, things like that vex pretty strong here into a lot of the dashes we've seen where a lot of these matchups can go finally onto the rift and my eyes also turn towards the likes of fuyu who uh, he's got a jinx he's got himself a front line he's got himself some engage and he's got a lot of people he can happily blow up who can't really touch him very easily i mean when you say it like that fuyu's got not the easiest game of their life but they have got the most setup you can imagine very similar to what we had from Sena in the previous game, and we saw how she was able to run away with that one. I believe 7 and 7 by the end of that one, if not more. Fuyu set up for success here against short-range champions and a Senna, which is not your biggest threat in the world. We have that fleet footwork that you were talking about last game, so is going to enable them to sustain a bit more in the lane, but removes that ability to stack up the gold, as we see with the first strike build. All right, getting word here from production as well. But Mortifer is indeed a sub. So no renames, nothing else going on. That is a change in mid lane personnel. Of course, uh, London U are one and three. Nathalie not been having the easiest time of it. So maybe this is an attempt to try and breathe a bit of new life into the uh, into the roster. But there you go. Got on the Graves mid. Unusual first uh, debut champion, I suppose. Here, see how it all plays out. And has gone towards the teleport as well, interestingly here. So they're going to have that summoner spell, even though, of course, the, with the changes over the off-season. Um, definitely seen a little bit lower priority, particularly in mid lane. I think that we could play a little bit of the uh, waiting game here with the Graves mid, is how many games does it take for Cloud9 to lock it in? It is one of those picks that really did rise to priority through LS talking so much about it. Partly because of the lifesteal build that we saw ever so oppressive played almost all of Worlds, uh, Worlds last year. Bit of a skirmish, got the level 2 lead. Doesn't go result in much. But for the Graves mid, it is actually that raw lethality burst with the Eclipse. And just mm -hmm. looking to one-shot people perma-pro like you are saying. And it just means that you can roam with your jungler, be a second jungler, but get the full farm. As opposed to those kind of Janus strategies where you sacrifice a lot of gold. See his ice again. Take yeah, a nice trade up towards that top side as well early on. And unsurprisingly, it's Fuyu and Zimba that do have Ooh. the early shot, but it forced the early flash as well as Divinus lands a nice little death sentence there. Throws the thumbs up as well. He knows he's pretty happy with that one. Gonna be a big win. Removes a lot of the ability for Fuyu to play up in this lane because the thing is, Brom can block the thresh hook for you, but if they do, they're going under tower, and that's a second summoner that might need to get burnt in this lane. We do have. Um. Brief pause. Brief game pause here. Uh, we'll let you know as soon as that's resolved and we'll be on to the rift as quick as we can. But early lane states, perhaps unsurprising where they're at. Silas and Graves getting the early shoves in. Fantasy pattern towards the bot side. And Fuyu and Zimba did have the early shove. But that little catch there from Divers might prove problematic. So of course, you land one more. You bring down a trundle into the likes of this. Uh, Jinx, who has you know lantern or anything to get out there, definitely a gank option now. You feel it's got to be an opening right there, especially when you have junglers that we have seen two games in a row now. After these Trundler, uh, Trundle and the Zinzao, very very good at those early ganks. As soon as they've got their level threes, it is all about okay, find the lane, put down the pillar, or get the jump onto them and then win becomes lightning from the Zins out. And there's really no escaping either. There is a reason that they have lived up there top of the mountain for a lot of the jungle picks for the past season and that's because the early pressure you can exert 
is massive. The fact that you can get with such good gank assist across the board, I would say, actually, even the Graves, not the mm. best in the world, but the fact that you can smoke screen a Vex, who is all skill shot based, does mean that you are in a bit of a poor situation if you're ever overextending in that lane. So got to keep your eye out for that one. Uh, Vex overextending could be Doom, which, I mean, fair enough, which is a little bit ironic, I suppose, considering, you know, the Doom and Gloom passive, but hey, what are you going to do? Um, taking a broader picture here while we have the chance as well, London United versus Lucid. Ah, oh, brilliant. Just got word from production there as well. Interrupting my sentence briefly because a little bit of a lag issue there for one of the members of London United. So hopefully that will get resolved shortly, but we're going to be just in the pause while that is being tried to resolve. And it does give us a little bit of a chance to go wandering down memory lane. Come meander with me, Melvis. And remember that Lucid versus London United was... Something uh, we were both commentating similar time last year, but down in Division 3 UKEL at the time, uh, where Lucid managed to uh, you know, promote into the UKLC shortly after, the, at the end of that split, kind of taking a 3-2 reverse sweep at the end of it all. It was all very exciting. Beautiful. Uh, Love that series. As well. yeah, in, in the summer split as well, we're one of the most dominant teams around. Fantastic players doing really, really well. And... Now they're both here, having managed to get through the calibration phase into Division 2, and there's just a little bit of history here, which is making this just a bit spicier in my mind. I always love it when we get to follow organizations for years and years. I think it's part of the reason why whenever you tune into, you can pretty much say any big region and there'll sure. be a corresponding team. you got LEC. Oh, Fnatic's playing? All right, that's going to get people's viewership just by name brand alone. Oh, wow, T1's on? I, I mean, fake is there, so that's enough. But sure. it's the same thing that when you have these orgs that have a history, particularly when it's London United here who have a lot of the returning players from their success down there in the UKL, it does make it way more compelling to follow and get to see these players and see these orgs develop over the years and see what kind of shapes they start to take, what kind of trends fit with the team itself and is more so just characteristic of them. It's been slightly inverted, well, literally inverted standings, though. Well, standings, uh, results, that's the word I was actually looking for, because it was 3-1 and one for Lucent, the inverse at 1-3 and three for London New, and that makes things quite interesting to, to follow in a lot of ways, because, of course, we've kind of talked, we've only had two weeks of play, but there was that kind of relatively clear divide between the teams that were towards the upper end of the echelons. You know, yeah, natives. for sure. We saw light side earlier as well. Munster, the three and one teams, and Lucent very much among them, had a phenomenal game against Natives last week as well that went into some spectacular late game fights. But on the other side, London U, been struggling with a bit more of that kind of finding an identity, honestly, is probably one I want to say. And I think it comes back to the fact that I haven't seen what I fell in love with this team for. And the main thing, every single time I have cast London United since seeing them, I have always talked about and commended them for their ability to draft well, and particularly, the ongoing theme of the night actually, draft specifically, almost like a ladder, almost like dominoes to use a earlier name. Dude, I made that because... reference once. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm going to steal it. We're in a pause, my friend. We're allowed yeah, to bring it's up It's fine, old it's old. time. Bring it back. This is recycling hours right here, so... <laughs> The reason that I love them is because you get to watch as the early game carries. Typically, Icy Girl on things like the Rengar, whatever they get, they are usually the powerhouse of the early game. Then it transitions into the mid game when Dunlossi escorts the lead across the map using things like the Rift Herald, using the initial gold generated by whoever their early game carry was into a consistent mid game champion. This was usually their bottom lane when it was, I believe, blank in the bottom lane down in UKEL. And then after that, Typically, it's mid lane. Things like the Akali yeah. and whatnot. Late game scalers would take over this game. Looking at, it's a bit up in the air though. The Graves, the Silas, and then the Senna lane. Kind of all just a bit of a mishmash. I wouldn't say that there's like yeah. a super consistent pecking order between them. I feel like it's been three games in a row now where we've not necessarily had what I would call standard draft. Like we had the Seraphine Karma into the Veigar. Then we had like the next game after we had like the Veigar mid with or with like the Camille into Malphite where Malphite again been a little bit around in Div 2, but not again that's really the pick you necessarily see all that much. Senna as well starting to rise back back up a little bit as a as a newer pick as well. And now we're into this game where we've got 
Graves mid, Silas top here after those kind of seven read nine, if you want to be like really pedantic like me and, you know, you know, extravagant, etc. Yeah, yeah, pedantic is just another word for correct. Correct. Thank you. Yes, they are flexes, so they count. It's happened at least once in pro play. So, you know, you literally can't fight me on this. No, I'm, I'm um, not going to try. You can, Aiden's but you'd be wrong. Way. So, you know, don't do it. I, I will choose not to on this occasion as we will <laughs> happily wait to see what happens with our nine top lane bans if we actually get the conclusion of what's going to play out here. Because a lot of these matchups, like you say, that's the thing. When you have such deep bans invested into one role, everything kind of falls around it and starts to become weird, I will say in air quotes. Because vex into graves is not a matchup that most people are going to be experienced in if you've played a lot of the graves mid you will innately be favored because vex is a lot more of a common champion than your mm. counterpart which means that you can look for these windows you can look for these kill angles in particular is what i'm thinking when you have a champion who loves to build the lethality early loves to build that eclipse adds a lot of extra burst and it's something that i think this game is a window for london united to use as their early game powerhouse to transition the lead up to Silas and then finally down to center. Yeah, and that is one of those issues a little bit with Vex. You know, the Gloomist might be very good at going in and being obnoxious and getting, you know, those big fear procs off at, at key moments. And when you've got a few dashing champions around, you stack that up kind of... It's kind of like hidden power for all the people kind of memed around a little bit about saying, oh, she's not really an anti-dash champion. Well, she kind of is in the fact that she punishes dash really hard because the more fears you're getting off... That's incredibly powerful, even if it's not like Poppy W. It's not sta it's not a steadfast presence where you can kind of actively see, you know, this dash doesn't work. It's more the fact that if you're dashing, you you are giving a lot of additional power to Vex more than she would normally get. The only thing I'll say is that, you know, you're also very squishy as a champion. Like you, you until you get a oh, zone, you are not you're not anything resembling a tank or a bruiser and eclipse graves, you get a Flash ignite. Well, it's not ignite. It's teleport. But you get like a flash Q auto R combo off, and someone is Gone. very dead. Gone. Yeah. Once you get to like the two three item car mark, that is one shot territory. Easy peasy. Expecting stuff like the potential collector Lord Dominic's etc. Or Huge. Lord Dominic's into Infinity Edge. Like at that point, what do you do? This you say it right. There's no itemization for defensive beyond the Zonyas. And if you're doing that as Vex, it means you're missing out on wonderful items like the Shadow Flame that could get you great value. You're missing out on just building straight into more AP to go for the counter one-shots. Because the thing is, Silas Graves center, main carries of the enemy team, all squishy. If this Vex gets ahead, there is the potential to just have the 1v9 kind of carry montage where we have Syntax going off on one on this Vex. And they do have the resetting kit, but I want to bring it back to what you're talking back to for a moment, is that when you have the plenty of dashes for Vex to farm up those resets on the fear, it means that they can actually snowball these fights way quicker. Normally, if there's no dashes for them to continue to stack up, they get one ultimate, they go in, and then it's like, okay, that a, that's it. That was a, um, quickly, we're still trying to resolve the lag on the side, of course, so that's the reason for the pause, but we've been sent a request from chat. They need to know who has the stronger lenses and the glasses. Um, it's about oh, no. the glasses wears... Well, what, what is your prescription? What is your prescription? I've got it written down here, believe have it. Have you? you of course, you of all people have it written down. Like, why Why am I not surprised? Did you print it out? Was it, did you print it out to boot? They printed it out. Thank you, Specsavers. <laughs> I've got it right here. My optical yeah, record yeah, yeah. card. You're, you're I'll not even joking. You right what now. is this? Okay, so my prescription. I don't know what any of this means, but my Tell SPH me. is minus 50 or 50. 0.5? I don't know what any of these numbers mean. This is the How second you, set of glasses. Are strong or not that strong? I can see without them, but it's mainly for um, okay. what's it called astigmatism. I think that's the one where it's uh, like yeah. a bit of both that you can't really see. So uh, you know, it's all right. So like, yeah, okay, interesting. Whereas my mind, I think I think like I'm a little bit stronger, but again, I can get away without wearing them. I just wear them because I like being able to see clearly. Yeah, I think I'm yeah. like, like minus one point seven five in one eye, like minus two two point five in the other. So like. Glasses, but not crazy. So there you go, chat. The answers have been found. I am well surprised. Um, it's one I prepared earlier. Exactly. And um, we've actually said we should be going in relatively shortly, only a minute or so till we're back into the action. Thank you for bearing with us. And we did get to to discover the, 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 the true power behind our glasses. Like, 
if I do this into the light properly, can I get the sheen? Not quite. Okay, no matter. Oh, have, like, okay. I just had I just had the camera refocus slightly yeah. to make my face go brighter. So I don't know whether that is it's kind of like a whole body sheen. Do I, do I kind of like a shiny Pokemon moment? I don't know. There you go. Uh, my anime glasses moment was perhaps more extreme than intended. I uh, yeah, I I like that meme, and I don't know why. I think it's just because of Mickey X and all the LEC advertising around when G two was like really at its peak. That was the picture he would continuously use as like the full on. Uh, reflection from the eyes. I'm not a big anime person, but I admit that scenes like that were you, pretty cool. I'm pretty sure you're commentating a little bit of the LJL stuff because I, I, I should know because I've done a bit of that as well. So, are you really legally allowed to do that and not have at least some connection to some anime? I, some I have enough. I, I have like the bare bones, like what you need to know to what, be what, able what? to reference. I get what a death okay. note is, my friend. I understand what that, that, that means. Okay. That's okay. That, that's, that's a fairly decent baseline sentence as we are actually into the game and that does mean we can take ourselves back off the meandering road we went on and instead talk about league of legends that's actually occurring on our screens live and hopefully it's uh mortifer did you say dead because class. um yeah okay uh well I, yeah vex with the ignite right there amazing stuff from syntax imagine to get that one and one of the issues we didn't really vocalize was Graves is really good into ADs because they can stack up that quick draw and build up a lot of armor. Thing is, Mundo yeah, and Vex, yeah, yeah. not exactly that heavy on the AD department. Yeah, if you had fought the Mundo for a while, they'd be getting a lot of AD from just building up on the E passive and whatnot. But, active, sorry. Vex, full AP, full one shot, beautifully done from Syntax, getting a great counter in this mid lane. Well, 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 that was a hell of a moment. And for a guy who's stepping in here, that's not what you want to have happen in your first game. Still didn't burn the flash and can get back out with the teleport. It's not huge amounts lost. And we'll get the replay here because it's literally is just flash W ignite. Okay, so I'm guessing there's a... Oh, no, it was the flash to proc it instantly. I was expecting a fear in there somewhere, but they didn't even need it. That is familiarity of the matchup that thing that i was saying earlier that uh definitely doesn't favor syntax here well i guess they played it before because brilliant knowledge of how much dps they had on them like and again the last time i cast syntax was in the international in houses a few weeks back and he had a pretty good showing then he was into a guy called i think it was a syntax in the top lane which made for a very confusing cast but Definitely impressed there. He's stepping into this Lucent Rossa that's 3-1, and one, doing really well. And you get First Blood solo like that into an unusual matchup, and you're feeling very pleased with yourself, I am sure. And right now, we do have Dunlossy lurking down here. Pillar available. If they can get in range for Fuyu, that should be a dead jinx. Flash. Death sense. Remember, there is a stand. But it's, oh, never mind that. There's a flay coming out. There will be no standing with Braum this time. And uh, Braum goes knocked to the ground and it's a kill for london united to tie up the kill score even us for the second time in this game getting the better end of the lucent bottom lane right there playing zimba out of the stand behind me isn't going to do too much for lucent they end up falling and now the center actually getting ahead which is you know we're talking about um which lane should be getting ahead when mid then top then bot uh throw that out the window all of our pause discussion was clearly worthless <laughs> Apparently so, it doesn't matter, and now we've got ourselves still actually a bit of a gold lead here for Lund United, despite the first blood, because lanes have been going pretty well. Uh, partly because, of course, those early summoners burned bot side alongside the gank, and then Graves and Silas just winning out those matchups pretty well right now. At least in terms of the CS, of course. We did, of course, mention the solo kill. We do have right now Dragon being attempted by looks of it from Fancy. I think that's Dragon. No, tell light, it was the Scuttle Crab. Never mind, on the minimap. They are going gank bot here, though. I'm going to try and get in. There's the Lantern back out. Fantasy gets flayed away. They do have Ooh. the Curse of the Black Mist to try and keep themselves alive. The Root coming through. Shadow Surge is there into the Flea. And that will be no options available. It's a decent Root in trade, but nice roam, nice kill for, Lu for Lucid there. As Mortifer does at least get some plates in mid. No university seen bias here, but I really thought Divinus had outplayed that one by the end of it. It looked like they were able to scurry away. The fact that Fancy wasn't able to get the knock-up straight away on the Zins out, but Syntax saving the play overall is going to still result in a net win as they're able to collect this mid-farm. 
does indeed. Syntax comes along, chunks out Mortifer, and, you know, it does cost a bit of CS, but at least it's a cannon wave now that Syntax can pick up. Yes, he lost a play or two in mid, but it's still probably a net positive play for Lucent, though they are still down that 500 or so gold as a result of, as we said, the laning states as they've stood and done last seed, taking the opportunity to go in and steal away those Krugs, which are, you know, worth a decent amount of money themselves. Is going to be a beneficiary of that and is also protecting ICL in this top lane, which I think is the more important factor as... Okay, he gets the base off, which means that now Fantasy could potentially roam up to this top lane, but actually going to take the lack of Krugs as a warning that Trundle is likely around. Trundle, big nuisance for the Munda. That's why we were a bit hesitant to see what the final lane matchups would have actually ended up being for London United, because you could put the pillar down, and as long as you put it underneath the person, it will remove the Mundo shield, so they can be CC'd after that, and the, the slow, again a nuisance for Mundo to deal with, and finally, once you've done all of that, you get to ult them, steal all of those resistances, and turn them into a punching bag, so every time Dunlussy makes his way to the top lane, Kastrula needs to play extremely reserved. Well, let's see whether he can manage to do that, because it's all well and good saying that, but vision control right now is at least keeping him relative. He's got that one ward in the bush, got that control ward in the river, but Icy Girl's going to go and sweep that up himself, and does make tracking the jungle even more important as fantasy was on vision, will be spotted Ooh. out, but Dunlossi's already in the bush, so they're going to bait the beta. Fantasy's about to get collapsed on. The center goes wide, and they're going to get the concussive blow stacks onto Divinus, but he's got a heal, and he's going to try and get out the back end of this. The pillars come down, trying to do as much damage as they can, and everyone walks out alive. And London United, I think, a little preemptive on the play right there. If they had just let Fantasy come around the corner and get the full-on aggressive flank that they wanted, maybe would have played out differently, but not wanting to take the risk, most importantly. Because the issue is, if you do let them get around there, there's the potential for just the knockback, and then Divinus is most definitely gone without Flash. Will, in result, get Trundle's ultimate and secure the first dragon for Lucent. So, happy days, I would say, for this squad that do seems indeed. very highly rated. Doing very well thus far, and they're you know, feeling a little bit more in control right now. It's been a relatively even early game i think it's fair to say and now time to kind of work out what happens now that this rift herald has spawned london you heading over to that themselves do have both the supports rotating neither adc will have to i'll hold myself on that actually see what zed does after basing on the center like we were saying last game on the flip not exactly the most useful champion for pushing in the bottom lane but the fact that they've managed to do that preemptively means that this should be free real estate for london united as for where they want to use it, though, that one's a bit more up in the air for me. I think that there's really easy dive potential top lane if you bring Graves. The only thing is, you need to do it at such a time where Kastrulin can't just ult and tank you on the tower. Mid lane, going to be a lot more dangerous. Shorter lane, it's not a very safe one to go for. Speaking of safe, Divinus, ooh, going to sneak away from that. Yeah, got a little bit close there for sure, but did manage to back out. Was trying to clear out some of those control wards, but... Lucent managed to force him away, and they've got a strong selection as they're going to flash in on Dillavidus, who has to flash out in turn. The, sh the Shadow Surge did go wide, so that won't allow Syntax to come in. So that will be flash for flash, support the jungler. In net, it's kind of hard to say if that's going to be net worth or not. Getting the double ward, that's some good synergy right there, as the Rift Tower will come down mid because of all that aggression shown <laughs> to the bot side, even Syntax leaving the lane. And it means now, with... Three minutes left on the plates. If Syntax wants to go for another one of those roams to the side lane when the Shadow Surge is back off cooldown, they are going to lose the mid lane tower. Graves, like we've said all game, brilliant wave clear. They can shove that in an instant. And right now, attention still down to this bottom lane from Lucent. They've been here so many times. Now Syntax does get pillar back, does have the flash. Smoke screens come through. The personal space is out. But it's still going to require a flash in trade. Dunlossi does burn the subjugate. The summoner being burned for the Vex could definitely spell disaster in a few minutes' time. The Syntax going to need to play the lane very, very carefully. If they do not have fantasy in the pocket, then it is going to be dangerous for them to ever step up. Flash available for Dunlossi, and the fact that you can pair that pillar with the subsequent damage that Graves could get from the two parts of Q. Ooh. 
Gonna try and get on to Kazed here, who does get stunned in place. The Winter Spite doing enough, but there's the Ignite coming through, piercing Darkness alongside. Now a last embrace coming after that. Death Sentence doing a lot of works, but the ooh, Dawning Shadow comes through, and the Zap was body blocked by Divinus just before that. And everyone stays alive just about again, but it's a lot of summoners burned. And that would have been a pretty clean cut kill for Lucent, but Zimba. Only level 5 at the start of it. Actually, leveling up to 6 in the middle of the play, you could see Divinus a full level ahead just from the fact that they have been in the range of XP more often than Zimba, who has been, for all intents and purposes, not able to stand in the lane for that, trying to be more proactive around the map. Neither support having a massive amount done globally yet, just the big lane impacts from the pair of them. So we do get both of them sprinting it down mid right here. Syntax wanting to look for something on the Mortifer here, and Divinus ready with the save. Absolutely, and both supports being around, roaming towards this mid lane at the same time. Definitely knew what was up off those resets. Syntax trying to be as obnoxious as they can with those Mistral Bolts coming over the wall. But it is sort of that time of the game where we're starting to see first items being completed, and Mythics uh, coming in for a lot of these members. And now we're going to see whether Mortifer can finally get a hold of this tower. There is still a plate to claim. I just don't know whether they're going to have the opportunity. And with a minute or so until this dragon spawning, I wonder whether that instead is where a lot of these players are turning their eyes. Most definitely looks to be the priority. And as we take a look down the mythics, a couple of them make really big fundamental changes. As we take a mm. look through, Syntax actually opting for the Ludens for that added burst onto the squishy targets, as opposed to the Everfrost for the more consistent lockup. Then if we take a look down to this bottom lane, Fuyu having the Gale Force not only allows them to try and get past the pillar that is so often a nuisance for the Jinx, but also means that if they are left alone in this bot lane, as we see, Zed needs to be very careful because Jinx can look aggressively for plays and get that chase down. The ramp up from that lethal tempo will be deadly, as right now we just have everybody making their way down for the Dragon and 4. Mid lane wave control is the name of the game, and I've also got to call out the lack of a mythic right now in Kassed, which could prove problematic in terms of damage, but Zimba still taking a big chunk as a flash from Isagel with the abscond of Duck to try and get the kill there. Won't quite manage it. That will be the Glacial Fissure coming out in trade, and those uh, infected bone sores being thrown out from Kastrulan, who's also popped the ultimate, but not much more to be found. That's a couple big moments down for Lucent. They're going to have to try and play around without it. That's the last embrace coming through. Mortifer dashing away. Has used the collateral advantage. Gets ignited in trade and they're forced back from the dragon. Going to try and get back in if possible. Dunloss sees around but the flame chopper's coming down. Remember this would be second dragon. That's a big hook onto the Mondo with no ultimate. There is no surviving a stolen dragon to boot as well. And Fantasy about to get run down on top of it all as well. They get to. They get the dragon. They'll get on out as well. And United starting that playoff aggressively, and because Icy Gale was so forthright charging in, it means that they just completely buy all stock in that river. They get the first rotate over, and it means that once the bot lane is able to get safely to them, it was a free fight from them at that point onwards. So we are going to see on the map, it's just going to be the dragon going over, nothing too dramatic other than that, and the kill onto Kastrulan. No extra towers dead on the side because that was everybody converging. Rift Herald will be spawning shortly as well. That might be another point of contest. And, you know, that actually swings the gold lead pretty heavily now in London News' favour. They're up about 3,000 just shy gold. They finally got that mythic that wasn't on center the last time, didn't wasn't needed in the end. And they're feeling pretty happy with where this game is going. They're going to scale pretty well. We've already mentioned they've got some decent answers in the side lane as the game goes on. But Lucent maybe might have a chance to redeem themselves here. We'll see whether they do want to contest around this Herald or whether either team actually is going to prioritize, prioritize it right now. It's like no direct attention being paid. We still have the bot lane actually from Lucent staying in their namesake lane. I assume this is just because they want to get that tower and get Jinx fully unlocked. When you take a look at both teams, Lucent have not got great side laners. Vex without the TP, very, very susceptible if they ever step into a side lane. Kastrulan on the Mundo, a bit safer, but for my money's worth, not exactly going to be doing that much hearty split pushing. It's all about the 5v5 for this squad. Whereas if we look over to London U, well, Graves and Silas are going to have a much better time. So as much stock as you can buy in the side lane early, that will pay you dividends later on into this game. 
I also feel that it's taken 17 minutes for Lucent to crack this bot lane tower, despite the amount of time Fantasy has come down here to try and make things happen. And uh, does now finally fall, but it is going to come in trade for this second Herald. Super Mega Death Rocket flies wide, and it'll just be a uh, express off to elsewhere on Rune Terror, wherever Summoner's Rift may be. No miracle steal from this one, as Tower is going to be accessible, but not hittable here safely when you're against the Thresh, and especially one like Divinus, who has been landing so many clutch abilities this game. It's going to be very important to not give them any chance to pick you off here. And talk about pick potential for both of these teams. It's not super high. It's really just going to be the death sentence plus pillar combo and then a Vex long range fear that actually gets it. So provided you're playing reserved, there shouldn't be too many isolated deaths this game. Shouldn't be. Doesn't necessarily mean that there won't be, however, Melvin is. We've been there before, mate. And um, yeah, it's all well and good having all of these statements like, yeah, this is the way the game should be played. I feel like that's not always... What is the, what's that line about, you know, like, plans not surviving contact with the enemy? Um, and there's definitely a bit of that as a possibility here. As, of course, London, you have got that Herald and Inventory. I'm probably going to save it, I imagine, for this Infernal Dragon that will be spawning in a minute and a half to, to buy some pressure in a lane and, and uh, control some of that wave state. Is Isagail maybe looking to trade onto Kastrulan here, who takes a bit of damage, throws, trades it back well enough with some infected blown, uh, bone sores and, of course, that blunt force trauma, which I really love as an ability name. It is a beautiful one. It rolls off the tongue, and I feel like uh, on your subject of the plans, you know, not surviving first contact with the enemy, I think that was just the theme of this game from the draft onwards. Oh, speaking of that, shouldn't be death in the side lane. Syntax going to try and make that one. Uh, a complete non-starter. Nice play there from Syntax. Who take, it doesn't even need to take the Vex Express. Uh, the Vex Express, as you will. Um, just Flash Ignite again. Done that once for a solo kill this game. Gets up a second kill later on in the sideline. On to Mortifer again. I can't believe it. They actually activated my trap card of Caster Cursing in this and one. It's... Love to see it's it, wrong game, mate. This isn't Yu-Gi-Oh. Why, why are you bringing that up? That's... You know, I, I'm a big <laughs> fan of Yu-Gi-Oh. You know? It's our little uh, I, I, pass I, I it back and forth on the intro. It's fun. It was, uh, you know, it was my childhood show. It's great. Yeah, it's true. It was, it was fun. It's true. I, I used to watch that as well back in the day. Uh, I, I will say the, the manga is significantly different to the show. Like it's yes, most definitely. It's significantly darker. Uh, like significantly yeah, yeah. darker. Um, I definitely uh, as you remember will. when I was a kid, I got gifted one of those uh, English dubs. Uh, oh, for yeah, yeah. Christmas, and I was like, oh boy, I can read about Yu Gi Oh as well. And then I get like three pages in, and there's a murder just on the street, <laughs> and I'm like, hold on a minute, this is not. This feels what? very wrong. Where's my oh, blue eyes? Really... Well, we've got a, a purple eyes blue rift scuttle in mid lane instead that will take out that mid lane <laughs> turret, and there's going to be no way to stop that one out. As I said, the Infernal Dragon going to be started. Syntax chased away on the side, did get rooted by the Everfrost. Dragon down to 2000 HP. Remember, Dunlossy stole the last one. Flame Jumpers in the way. They're going to hook onto Syntax. No way out, and that will be a trade. Somehow, Syntax killed off Trundle as he in turn was taken out, but they're now. Who you even through the exhaust doing so much work Still to run people flank. down. Not excited anymore. Isigail healing back up and now the turnaround might be here. Mortifer getting flashed on, trying to dash away with the quick draw. Fuyu flashing forward, gets the kill, is now excited. And that makes it a two for one trade right now. Zed getting a kill back though, and this is going to be the run down in trade. Flash for the last embrace, gets Kastrulan. Not rooted up because of course he can go where he pleases. And he backs out alive. Dragon, but it's in trade for three. Goodness me, that is going to be just an arm wrestle of a fight down and back up the river. Played very well from both teams, just constantly trying to play on the front foot. And the thing is, when Kastrulan is realistically the only tanky member in this game, even the Brom not that tanky by comparison, it just means that these fights are so swingy. If you hit the right abilities then you could just turn it on an instant. Let's take a look at the replay and actually break down how that one kicked off. Because it really did start kind of out of nowhere. Maybe it was because we were talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! But the hook that goes down onto Syntax, they managed to get their abilities out first and burst out Dunlossy. But you watch here, Lucent start chasing up because there's scattered members of London United. But when Mortifer comes around this corner here, you have to spend time to regroup. At this point, you have Zed and Divinus chasing up the back and Mortimer manages to buy enough time 
that they can allow their team to collapse in. And this was actually Lucent's choice to take this fight. They could have kept trying to run away, but by turning around, they give Icy Gale the opportunity to go in. And it ends up just being a trade of mass summoners, mass death, but the dragon most importantly goes to Lucent. And we're left with a game state that's still London new favoured wise in terms of the goal. But Lucent, of course, did stop the dragon stacking. And they've still got some options here to make the game interesting. It's a two item for you on this Jinx. You've got the three and one Vex. It's already made some aggressive plays. The problem is the Silas starting to get scarier and scarier. Two items complete. Got through some of those more challenging early moments in the game. You've got the Senna at two items. Graves. Is not the problem as off screen uh, Vex gets a kill on Tuxed. Doesn't use the ultimate. Um, yeah, okay. Well, that is going to buy enough space to go for this Baron right here. And it means that if you try and contest as London U, you really can't because Zimba could just play this aggressively They're forward. They're going to try. Still, there's still flash on Don Lossy. He's got subjugate. Could definitely try and get in there. They're going to try and board him out. There goes Icy Gale looking to get in. No hijacked ultimate as yet. They're turning off the Baron. This is now the 5v4. The pillar, though, keeps a lot of Lucent away. For you couldn't start auto attacking. That's the Crescent Guard stolen by uh, Icy Gale. And will manage to get away. And they stop the Baron take. Going to be looking at the important summoners used in that one. Pretty much nothing, actually. We get away with murder on both sides. A bit of an ignite, bit of a TP in from Icy Gale, but nothing of note, realistically, to speak of. So we get a close call from both sides, all off the back of a pick onto Zed on this center. Let's see how that actually happened, because it was definitely mm. not something we were ready for. So is it just, no it is just a oh, shadow set. Ah, okay, all aboard the a reset. Right, right. They look like they hadn't used it because of the reset. So yeah, that's the power of X. Squishy carries on the enemy team. No tanky items to speak of across the Silas, Graves, or the Setter. Yeah, a little bit of shielding on the Graves and a tiny bit of additional help on the Silas. But as we see right there, Syntax has all the power in their hands to be able to one-shot these key members. Absolutely do. And... It is Luden's Shadow Flame as the build. No Everfrost, no Zonyas, none of that utility. All out damage right now for Syntax, and it might be required as the Baron started this time by London U. But they in turn also pull off it, and now the on the way pings come from Lucent, thinking about trying to force through this mid lane. That Shadow Surge did miss. The Flame Chompers also put in place to make sure that there was no easy way through that choke point. Zimba got hooked, but still stepping forwards. Does decide to move backwards. Now Mortimer over the wall tries to get a big chunk and does so. But they're still going to get to back away 30 seconds until this Drake. But a couple potentially important ultimates down. Syntax, no resets available as yet. Going to mean that this Vex is just going to be a glorified Syndra at this point. Looking for those long range CC instances to try and set Fu you up for a reset. It's going to be very difficult to do. London United can play at arm's length and just utilize... Senna's miss to try and rotate around without giving any opportunities over. They can certainly try. Syntax does have the Doom and Glue passive stack. Gonna get a big fear there. But on the other side, the Dawning Shadow cuts across so many members. Flame Chompers block the way in again. Syntax going to try and choke out and poke out as much as they can with the Mistral Bolts. But remember, London U definitely got their Unless own ways of flash. dealing. Definitely got their own ways of engaging. Dragon started. This would be sole point for Lucent. They're starting it down to about 3,000 HP. Syntax in the same place as last time. Looking to try and get in here. Dunlossi will not get there in time. He is chunked out. There is the Shadow Surge coming through. Could reactivate. Hasn't as yet. And instead, London U will back out and try and get a shove in mid lane. But they don't get a hold of the Dragon. Lucent at sole point. Managing to buy themselves so much space walking into this objective. And now, mid tower. Oh, my days. Never mind. I was about to take a drink, and that was a bad timing. Not as we're going to get a one for one. Top for mid lane. The hook comes through on a difference. trying to get a big flay off. Going way deep onto Fuyu, who does get taken out. Flash out from Divinus, who's still alive. What a pick. It was the massive flash take from him at level one, two. They'll get three kills in the mid lane off that beautiful play there as well. This is just trying to overstay after Lucent burning all their cooldowns in that initial scrap. It's going to cost them the Inhib Tower, perhaps the Inhib as well, but I don't think London United want to commit to staying here. Looks like they're a bit mishmash in their calls. They will turn around for it, have the Thresh Lantern, so they should be able to get to safety. Teleport available for Kastrulan, but nobody else, so this will be them strolling away. London United, 
I'm going to say victorious in that play, but on a timer due to the soul point. Oh, just okay. watch this hook from Divinus. Holds it so well. You know, proper diamond hands. And I'm not talking about Elo here. Great stuff. And Syntax, they get CC'd up initially, but just the lurking around the side, Divinus playing at max range, just being a nuisance. No way for you to get the play. Mm. Perfectly weave through the minions onto the Jinx. And at that point, they're able to go back in, get the big flay and box that just completely breaks up the fight. If you allow Senna to get into one of these extended skirmishes where nobody ends up dying, they are way better than Jinx. And that was exactly what we had right there. Zed pumping out insane numbers all off the back of this bot lane for London United who have took over the game. Let's have a look in at the Senna stacks. We've just not done that this game as yet. And I think it probably is time that we checked in. Yes, it's farming Senna to the soul stack. Probably not as extravagant as they could be, but it would be good to see what those numbers are. I mean, they're at three items already, so the fact that they That's are applying true. double on hit passive, Ouch, stacking up yeah. with the Q as well. Ooh, Syntax looking for something. Isn't going to pick Ooh, it off, there. though. Okay, that is no Shadow Surge, though, available. Yeah, it'll be up for the Dragon, but it means that right now this Vex is not safe. Ooh, okay, that's another big hook coming through. Syntax getting poked back out. Remember, there was no stopwatch. It's only an arm guard. Zed gets the killing spree. And that is a second death in a row now for Syntax. From four and one to four and three. And now they're going to move towards this Baron with the critical mid laner down. Fantasy needs to find some way in here to try and make this a steal. But Divinus and Isagale are looking to play Bouncer. Very good blockers in the way right here. Especially with the Zinza Ultimate able to be used on themselves. Dragon, uh, Baron, sorry, down to 4,000 so steel. That's the super mega death rocket going Ooh. in. Going to try and steal it. Won't quite make it happen. They had the burst to try and make it a difficult moment, but they'll get the kill. They'll get the Baron. They'll get out. And London United looking more and more like this is their game to lose. Very close timing with the Fuyu rocket coming in and the flash. But that means now the Zin's out. Flashless coming up over to the Dragon in a minute and 30. This puts London United in a stellar position to contest this. If you take a look, Icy Gale is an absolute madman on this Silas. Going to be able to upgrade into the full Zonyas if they so choose on this base. A lot of completed items coming out across the London United squad. Dunlossy is so difficult to handle. Your only magic damage is this Vex. And Vex doesn't do any unfair damage no percentage max health no true damage they are a very straight up ap one shot champion which means really good against your squishies but dunlossy will eat them for breakfast three items three and a half items said and we did just check in on that soul count it is 90 souls has got that 40 percent crit strike chance from the passive alongside the kraken slayer is definitely starting to kick in some heads fancy gonna get flashed on by icy gale stepping forward they're gonna lock down the jungler and he's taken out there was no crescent guard available with the jungler dead who cares about dragon maybe gonna shove in and try and get even more the inhibitor was already fallen after the play went awry in mid lane they've got a wave they've got super minions they can try and end it center rapid fire is gonna be massive here gonna be able to poke down the enemy underneath their own turret outranging at this point needs to be a massive vex ult for Ooh. something to get back in that was a good start for the flash after the fear came from the doom and gloom on the mistral bolt. And with the summoners down, they're going to try and maybe get some more big stun though with the last embrace. And Zimba goes down as a collateral damage, takes him down as an afterthought. Tower falling, Kastrulan on this Mundo can't block enough. In goes Syntax to get a big fear, but the rest of the team is fallen and London United take this win, moving to two and three and Lucent. Lose two games back to back. My friend, we come into today with expectations and they are being subverted at every natural turn they could take. Throw out the script. It is all up in the air. Amazing stuff from London United. All of our standings are starting to close together. Suddenly, this is starting to look like, oh, well, we had one high end of the split and one low end of the split. And now everybody is grouping up together in one colossal clump of damage. We've had a number of big upsets around. We've had some expectations go awry, and it's another one of these today. We'll cut to a quick break, and when we come back, we'll have some interviews for you. So we'll see you after that.